anybody who might be hiding in the cracks anywhere, have a good time, worship with us, and may God bless every one of you. We're going to start out tonight with one of my very favorite camp meeting songs. It's number 293. It's called, There's a Fountain Open in the House of God, Where the Vilest of Sinners May Go. Would you stand? Number 293. We're going to start right out. Here we go. There's a fountain open in the house of God where the finest of sinners may go. And on this the power of the graves of God, of the blood that makes whiter than snow. Praise the Lord, I am washed in the all-cleansing blood of the Lamb, and my robes are whiter than the dreaming stone. I am washed in the blood, keep singing, Lamb, the mouth was opened in the Savior's sight, how the feet did rejoice in the and we're going to sing these other two verses. <sighs> I have overcome now by the blood of the Lamb and I'm clothed, listen! And I'm on my journey to that glorious land where forever I dwell in the light. Singing with palms in their hands. These are tribulation gained the victory, having washed in the blood of the Lamb. Praise the Lord, I am washed in the all cleansing blood of the Lamb, and my robes are white and the driven stone. I am once more, praise the Lord. I walk in the old cleansing blood of the Lamb, and my robes are whiter than the driven snow. I am washed in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Remain standing if you will. Praise the Lord, everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Or right, try it again. Praise the Lord, everybody. Yeah. Amen. Let everything that hath breath yeah. praise the Lord. Amen. Isn't he worthy of our praises tonight? Yeah. God is good, and he has been good to us thus far in the camp meeting. It's good to see more of the seats filled in tonight and that more folks are coming. Let's continue to pray for those that are traveling uh, both near and far to be a part of our camp meeting experience. 
It's just good to be in the house of the Lord. And the welcome has already gone out to all of you who are watching tonight uh, via YouTube or Facebook. We uh, appreciate you being with us. And we want to take a moment to ask you to please call somebody. Give them the login address and tell them to uh, log in and be a part of this camp meeting service on tonight. Uh, we do have a few prayer requests that we want to remember in prayer. Uh, Sister Kathy Rice, let's remember her in prayer tonight. Also, we want to remember Sister Nethers, uh, who is in Riverside Hospital, and we want to continue to lift her up before the Lord in prayer on tonight. Uh, I'll give you a couple of announcements before uh, we introduce the speaker, uh, but I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. If they still have that song out, praise the Lord, I'm washed. In the all-cleansing blood of the Lamb. Amen. And my robes are spotless. Amen. Thank God for that tonight. That's, that's one of the old songs of the church uh, that has helped us to keep our heads up in times of trials, tests, and temptation. To know that we are washed in the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Salvation is free, but there was a great price paid for you and I to be able to gather in this place tonight. And we know that there are places all over this world today where saints cannot gather as we're gathering. God help us never to take this for granted, but to always be glad and rejoice at the opportunity that we have to celebrate the Lord together in song, prayer, and praises, and the preaching of his word. So we're going to sing another verse or two of this song, and while we're doing that, we're going to ask you to take just a minute, give somebody a good Church of God hug, and a good Church of God welcome, and welcome them to camp meeting tonight. Amen. Ooh. I'm sorry. What are these? In spotless robes and winds came they as they singing with song in their hand. These through tribulation gained the victory, having washed in the blood spilled. talking to me but um i tell you doesn't this choir look good man i tell you that's a great choir right there and choir doesn't this congregation look good yes. man this place is almost full There's plenty of room left but i'm glad that we can come i'm, I'm so glad that we can come together yes, where two or three are gathered together and we have a whole lot more than that tonight yes. and so we're just going to pray that god would Come and temper this service with this presence that is his 
Spirit visits our hearts, His will will unfold in our lives, and we go out of here never the same for what's been accomplished while here. Would you bow your heads with me? Our gracious Heavenly Father, as we come to you tonight with thankful hearts for so many things we could take from here until midnight and beyond, way beyond, of all the many things that you've granted us. But for right now, we're thankful that you've granted us the health and strength and the wherewithal and the resources, the means, the desire, motivation to come to this place. And we thank you for those, those visionaries before us and those present who still want camp meeting to become a tradition in so many of our lives. We thank you for the work that this church does, the sacrifice that they, they make from the cooks to those who clean to those who carry on the things behind the scenes, that this might be a reality and we can come from near and far and settle into a service such as this. Bless this congregation in a great, great way for their gift and their generosity extended to us through this camp meeting. Now the requests that have been brought to this church's attention tonight. We're thankful, Lord, that we can bring them to you and you know every need, you know where everyone is. To those who are bedfast, to those who, Father, have uh, fighting many battles in their life, and for those who chose not to come because they may be on the run. For our children and our spouses and our aunts and our uncles, our neighbors and the neighborhood that's lost and undone, I pray you'd visit them tonight, Lord. Speak to them and draw them through conviction. But for this service, Lord, we just pray that your will would be done in our lives. Bless the remainder of the music. We know it's going to be wonderful and we'll enjoy every note that's sung. And then as the speaker comes forward, I pray God that there would be a special anointing on him tonight because, because we need it. Father, we need to hear from you and through this brother, I pray that as he speaks, that we'll be not distracted, that we won't think about what's waiting on us, what, what, what may have be on our minds, but clear them. And then God, when he speaks, we'll hear from heaven. And I pray tonight, Lord, that God, if you speak to me, I'll make my way to this altar. I pray that our hearts would be hungry and tender to the Holy Spirit's call tonight. And if there's one here tonight that's lost, if through this internet that God is going out to so many, if they feel a sense and a call on their life, I pray on bended knee on those couches, the bedside, wherever they are, and surely in this altar here tonight, we'll find a place of repentance, redemption, and restoration. So Father, we give ourselves to this service, to your will, May it be done in every life, and may we again never be the same for what's done. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Come on and praise Him, look what the Lord has done. 
I was bound by the chains of darkness and sin. I had no hope and no peace of mind. My sins were like scarlet. He washed them white as snow, and he opened up my blinded eyes. Now my soul doth rejoice, since I made him my choice. I got love, peace, and everything I need. My name's been written down in that lamb book of life. Can't you see what he's done for me? Oh, look what the Lord hath done. And look what the Lord hath done. He healed my body, he touched my mind, and he saved me just in time. Oh, I'm going to praise his name. He said he's not Praise the Lord. Think about it. Come on and praise him, church. Look what the Lord has done. He set me free, yes, he set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. I'm glory bound, my Jesus, to see for glory to God. He set me free. Oh, he set me free, yes, he set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. I'm glory bound, my Jesus. Us to seek for glory to God, He set me free. So look what the Lord hath done. Look what the Lord hath done. He healed my body and He touched my mind. He saved me just, just in time. Oh, I'm gonna praise His name. For each day he's just the same. Oh, come on and praise him. Look what the Lord has done. Come on and praise him. Look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. Let me tell you what. I wanted to say something before, but Brenda plays. She starts playing before I even get down here, and I don't want to interrupt her. But let me tell you, this song is my testimony. I was bound by the chains of darkness and sin. I had no hope and no peace of mind. Has anyone been there? Have you ever been so far in sin that you couldn't even see hope? I was there. He opened up my blinded eyes. Think about that. Now my soul doth rejoice since I made him my choice. You know, I, I, I wonder why, why sometimes that the church doesn't just explode the roof off for what the Lord has done. We serve a omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent God that can do anything. And when you think that there is only one thing that could wash away our sins. Only one thing, brother. There is no other hope except Jesus Christ. And it was his blood that washed me as white as snow. And I was condemned to die. Think about that. We were condemned to die and to burn in an eternal hell. But Jesus Christ paid the price on the cross for our sins when we didn't deserve it. And I'm so thankful, I'm sorry I can't keep quiet because I remember how condemned, how miserable I was, how everything looked dark, but he put a new heart in me. He, he took my past and he threw it in the sea of forgetfulness, never to be remembered again. And I could sing this song over and over and over because I'm so thankful for what the Lord has done for me. Let me sing that verse one more time, if you don't mind. He's worthy of our praise. You think about it. I saw Sister Vicki raising her hand. He healed her body. Have you ever prayed and asked God to heal your body? Has he done that for you? 
I was bound by the chains of darkness and sin. I had no hope and no peace of mind. My sins were like scarlet. He washed in white as snow. He opened up my blinded eyes. Now my soul doth rejoice since I made him my choice. I've got love, peace, everything I need. My name been written down in that lamp book of life. Can't you see what he's done for me? And look what the Lord hath done. Oh, look what the Lord hath done. He healed our bodies and he touched our mind. He saved me just in time. Oh, I'm going to praise his name. You know that each day he's just the same. So come on and praise him. Look what the Lord has done. Listen now. For he set me free. Yes, he set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. I'm glory bound by Jesus to see. For glory to God, he set me free. Look what the Lord has done. Oh, look what the Lord hath done. Look at what the Lord has done. He healed my body. He touched my mind. Praise God, Joe. Praise God for what he's done. I'm going to praise him. Each day he's just the same. So come on and praise him. Look what the Lord has done. Come on and praise Him. Look what the Lord has done. Look what our Lord has done. Praise God. Praise the Lord.
Turn to number 414, we'll sing. Well, what we're going to do tonight, the youth choir is coming up, and they're making the switch right now. So we're going to sing How Sweet the Bond of Perfectness. Sing it, would you please? We'll take our evening offering. How sweet this bond of perfectness, the wondrous love of Jesus, a pure foretaste of heaven's bliss. Trials I run into, He will continue. 
a song this time. God bless you. Someday the 
step will be taken. Each step I take just leads me closer home. Brother Bartlett mentioned him last night. We didn't know he, I didn't even know he talked. <laughs> he showed up in choir and set things on fire. Thankful for Brother Andrew. Have a minute, and we have a ladies trio to come and sing before the message tonight. of uncertainty questions come to my mind what is waiting ahead for me and the rest of mankind fear not tomorrow God is already course you take. He sees each hidden snare. He's waiting to guide you through each burden and care. Fear not tomorrow. God is already
praise God tonight. Thank God for the good singing that we have heard and uh, the worship and the praise that we have experienced tonight. And it is now time for us to prepare our hearts to receive the preaching of the word of the Lord. And I am happy to report there is a preacher in the house tonight. Before we bring him to you, however, I do want to make a few announcements. Uh, I am grateful for the power of the internet and the ability to be able to uh, enjoy a service even when you can't be there physically. There is nothing like being with the people of God and being in the house of God. Make no mistake about it. Uh, there is something about the fellowship that you can only experience when you are gathered where the people of God have gathered. Uh, but I am grateful uh, for those times when you cannot be here uh, that you can still catch the service uh, by way of the internet. Such was the case for me this morning, having a lot of work that I had to take care of, uh, yet I was able to still uh, be a part of the service this morning and hear Usama Dakdak as he gave a excellent teaching on the Muslim agenda. And uh, I think that's something that we certainly need to be aware of without being afraid of. Uh, ignorance is not bliss. Uh, we do need to know the things that are going on in the world around us and how to adequately and sufficiently call upon the Lord uh, to show us how we are to, uh, to deal with these things as they come. So uh, we certainly thank God for the lesson that we had on today. I do want to remind you there will be two more opportunities uh, for you to be a part of uh, the teaching that uh, Osama Dakdak is giving. And I know I'm probably messing his name up royally. Did I do all right? Okay. Uh, with a name like Iran and Osama Dakdak on the same program, you don't know what's going to break out in here. <laughs> Scud missiles flying from one side of the but anyhow, we want you to please come and uh, it is good to know and be aware. Again, we're not inciting fear, but we do want you to be aware so that you'll know how to both pray, plan and prepare uh, for what might lie ahead uh, in years to come. All right. Uh, also, we want to remind you again tonight. One o'clock, one o'clock on Tuesday and Wednesday. One o'clock, okay? So please, uh, we don't want to tell you to eat fast and, you know, something happened to you, but, but certainly come in and promptly, if you would, please be on time so that uh, uh, Osama can uh, do what he needs to do and help get this information across to us. On Tuesday evening, uh, again, want to remind you of the offering on Tuesday night is a, a special offering we're asking for your help, please, to help defray some of the expenses, a lot of expenses go into a camp meeting such as this and um, and you're not being overtaxed by any means uh, by the service and what you know the saints here are providing uh, we just are asking for a special offering please to help defray some of those expenses don't want anybody to feel bad but just do your best would you please uh, give your very best on Tuesday night to help with some of those expenses also I want to remind you that the bookstore is open prior to service starting and immediately following service, and we want to encourage you to stop by the bookstore. Also, there are some vendor tables in the lobby, and we want to encourage you to stop by those tables and peruse some of the items that are on the table and uh, support those persons who have brought uh, some things for you to, to get. Uh, again, information is always good, and so we need to make sure we do that. There is one last announcement, and I, I want to make sure that everybody is listening. Uh, please give me your undivided attention. Uh, the kitchen is asking for ladies and or gentlemen in the congregation here to please provide some desserts. Now, that's a special announcement. <laughs> and, and I'm asking for anyone who is anointed to make a cherry pie. Uh, you know, if you ain't anointed, don't, you know, if you ain't sure if it's your first pie, don't do it. Amen. 
But if the Lord has smiled on you and anointed and gifted you to make a cherry pie, make two of them, set one aside, and then the other one you share with everybody else. All right, so please, would you all do that and help support the kitchen, amen? At this time, we do want to bring our speaker before you. He is no stranger to this camp meeting. Uh, he has been here many times before, and every time I've heard him, I've always been blessed. I could stand here and tell you about all of his credentials and all that he has earned and achieved and the places where he has worked and served and how God has used him across this nation and uh, even around the world to be a blessing uh, to men and women everywhere. I could tell you how many people have been saved under his ministry and the number of people he has baptized. I could tell you about all of the theological seminaries and cemeteries that he has attended and uh, tried to impress you with all of those things. But can I tell you tonight, none of those things matter. There's only one thing that is important and that is he is saved and he is sanctified and God has called him to stand before his people and deliver his heart and soul. And in these times in which we live, we don't need a whole lot of parading and a whole lot of sashaying going on. We need to hear a word from God. And our speaker tonight is anointed to do that. I believe if you will pray for him as he comes and listen with an attentive ear and hear what God is saying through him, you will be blessed and you will be charged to go out and to do more for the kingdom of God. He is uh, Pastor Glenn Sizemore, and he comes from a friendly place called Means, Kentucky. And you have to be anointed to come from Means, Kentucky. Kentucky. Amen. So if you will pray tonight as he comes, uh, let's receive him with a big amen. Put your hands together. Thank God for Pastor Glenn Sizemore. Thank you, Brother Watson. You're so gracious, my brother. Amen. I am thrilled to be a part of this camp meeting, of course. You know, uh, camp meetings is what held the Church of God together. Amen. We don't have rules and regulations that hold us together. What has held us together down through the years has been our camp meetings. Amen. And when our camp meetings begin to deteriorate, our fellowship begin to deteriorate. Amen. We begin to lose a lot of camaraderie with our brothers and sisters because our camp meetings... Yeah begin to deteriorate. Amen. And I trust that this will always continue, that we'll always remember that these are the backbone, the heart and the soul of the church of God yeah. Yeah. and uh, attend those. And I, I appreciate that. And Brother Tony, I thank you for inviting me to be here tonight. And um, I, I kind of tell people I, I, I still get nervous. And I remember a young man that was called, he, he announced his calling into the ministry. And uh, he did it at a camp meeting, and one fellow came to him and told him, he said, I, my congregation, I've been pastoring them for 30 years. They have never heard a preacher preach his first sermon. And would you come and preach your first sermon for us? And the little fellow said, why, yes, I, I sure, sure would be glad to. And, of course, he attended a little church of about 10 or 15 people up in the woods. And when he went to the directions to where the church was at, when he got there, it was a parking lot full and about 500 people in that church. And he got up and he said to them, he said, on the way over here, only me and the Lord knew what I was going to preach. And he said, now only the Lord does. <laughs> I hope tonight that I can talk to you. I've thought about this and I'm worried about our commitment to the Lord. I really am, folks. I'm worried about how committed we are to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. After he gave the most powerful and the most precious atonement for our sins, nothing is more potent than the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. It's more precious than diamonds and gold. Yes. And he gave that for you and I and we ought to truly be committed because when Jesus found me, I had messed up my life. Yes. My life was such a mess. I was on my way to hell and I couldn't change that. I needed some help. Amen. Amen. And Jesus Christ saved my soul. Yes. Yes. 
And he wants me to commit to him because I was destroyed anyway. And now he has saved my soul and I love him for that and I'm committed to him and want to continue. And I want to read a passage of scripture in 1 Thessalonians chapter uh, 5 and I'm going to read verse 16 through uh, 21 if I can, 22 if I can. And I'm going to get my thought on commitment. Uh, we need to be committed and, and the Bible says this, rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the Spirit. Despise not prophesying. Prove all things and hold fast to that which is good and shun all appearances of evil. Sounds like Paul wanted us to be committed to the Lord. It sounds like he wanted us to commit our whole life to him. Amen. Hey, not just our Sunday, right, right, right. not just our tithe, yeah. but our life. Yeah. Our very lives. If we will commit that to him, he'll do something for us. Had the early martyrs not committed everything to him, they couldn't have stood the pressures when they were tied to a stake and burned. They couldn't have stood it if they hadn't have done that. But they committed everything to him. And, and, and you see, we, we don't put much of an effort anymore. And, and if we don't put forth an effort in our services, we're, we're not just going to lose our nation. We're going to lose our relationship with Christ. Amen. And I don't want to lose my relationship with Jesus Christ because I, I, he said to me, I'm no longer my own. Folks, listen tonight. You are no longer yours. Now you think about that for a minute. You're no longer yours. Jesus saved you and he bought you. Amen. In other words, it was a buyout. <laughs> he paid a tremendous price for me and you tonight. And our bodies are now to glorify God. The saints don't have a good time in church anymore, hardly. You know what it is? When my spirit... And your spirit comes together and we bond together. And then the magnificence of the Holy Spirit comes down. And we are under the, pre, under, under the, the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Brother, we ought to have a good time. Yeah. There ought to be some excitement going on in our church services because we're bonding with the Holy Spirit of God. And brother, when we bond with Him, you and I need to get up and tell people about it. Yeah. We need to bond with him tonight. And that's what our spirits are to do, you see. And, and, and you know, brother, it don't seem like church is much fun anymore. Church ought to be fun. It ought to be more fun than the ball games and, and more fun than the fishing and more fun than the, 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 the society gatherings and the uh, 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 fellowships that we have. Church ought to be the most fun anybody ever had. If we can't have fun when we come to church, we are in big time trouble, my friend. We need to have some fun. Yeah. My goodness. I remember when saints used to have a good time in church. Don't you remember those times? I'll get to my points in a minute, okay? But let me, let me ramble a little bit, okay? I remember when people come to church and had a good time. They look forward to going to church. I, I, I wonder what my people at Hope are thinking when they're getting ready to go to church in the morning on Sunday. Oh, my goodness, I got to go listen to him again. Oh, I'd love to go here. I'd love to go there. I wonder what the saints are thinking. Brother, my mother and dad, when they went to church, they were so excited about going to church. Get up, kids. We're going to church. And when they went to church, they had church. Brother, they had church, and I'm telling you, they had a good time there. But I remember that I, I, I made a when I get out of the bed of the morning until I go back to bed at night, I'm to glorify God. Let me give you some good advice tonight. Okay, young people, mom and dad, grandpa, get in the crowd that's cussing and going on with the Lord and, and going on about things and, and say, praise the Lord. Yeah. It's good just to praise God for what he's done. He said forevermore. We ought to be praising Him. Yeah. 
You see, when I got saved, I got a new employer. I had a new workplace. I had a new job. I had new friends. I had a new environment. The fact is, I was a new creature. And you and I need to commit more than we are committing to the Lord. God wants a revival. He wants a revival. But the thing about it is, he can't find any full-timers. Okay? Not Sunday morning people and Sunday people and Wednesday people. God's not going to use those. Those are part-timers. And you know, part-timers are serving two masters. Trying to, anyway. God wants people that are full-time. And I believe that today that, my friend, we are ripe. For a spirit-filled, God-sent, devil-hating revival. Amen. I believe we're right for that. We're in the darkest time that I have ever known in my life. But who among us is possessed enough to say, God, use me? Who'll do like old Noah, go out in the middle of nowhere where there's no streams and no water and build a big old boat for 120 years? Who's that possessed? Who's possessed like Elijah that we would give up all and, 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 and commit to the Lord and stand before the kings and, and, and tell Ahab, you know, hey, it's not going to rain. Who's that committed anymore to God? Who's committed enough that we'll come in to our church service and say, I, 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 I want to teach a class or, or, or I want to preach or I want to pastor. Who's committed enough today that we'll stand up and be different from the world? We got to church. We have to be different, and we must be different. Now I'm going to say I know I'm rattling right now, but let me rattle, please. I'll get to my message here in a minute. I, I've been in a lot of church services, and I'll be honest with you: I don't believe there was no hating of the devil in that business. I've been in a lot of church services where it don't seem like nobody hated the devil. After what he's done to your family, after what he's done to your children, after what he's done to you, after what he's done to our nation, what he, the destruction that he's done, and the things that he has stolen, I believe somebody ought to hate him. I hate you, devil. There needs to be a devil-hating revival in America, and we need to let the devil know we hate him. In fact is, I think a lot of people that go to our churches are enjoying some of his work. <laughs> you think about it. You think about it. Brother, he has never done anything good for me. But don't it, don't it make you, you feel like, hey, I believe I owe Jesus Christ something. Too many are coming to church today not to participate. They're coming to spectate. They just want to see what's going on. You know, well, I had one fellow say, well, I, I, I'd say more, testify more, but I don't have time. I don't know why he didn't have time. I guess he thinks we got a quitting time. Vance Havener said that we start at 11 o'clock sharp and quit at 12 o'clock dull. But I promise you tonight, one thing, my friend, is that if you and I will start participating, then people will start having fun and we'll start enjoying it. Amen. You know, I, I know, oh, we got to get out. Most people are thinking about five minutes to 12, this alarm goes off in people. You know, I wonder if the Presbyterians are getting out. I wonder if the Methodists are getting out yet. I wonder if the Baptists are getting out yet. Man, we got to beat them to the cafeteria or we'll just have the leftovers. We'll be scraping the pan. We've got to forget that kind of stuff if we're going to have revival in America. We, we, we got to quit this. I remember a time when we come to church and we were amazed. But now we come to church to be amused. We also had to tickle us. Folks, listen, you know what amazed the earlier people when they went to church? You know what was so amazing about it? It was how much they put in the service, how much they participated, and how much they done, how much they wanted to do, and everybody wanted to do their part to make it what it is. And they had church. And friend, listen, I grew up in a church where we started at 10 o'clock and quit about 2. And I never heard the first person complain. 
Well, so much for that. But I, I'll tell you what, I, I go to church. And when I go to church, I want to see some Holy Spirit action. <laughs> Don't you want to see some Holy Spirit? Brother, that's what it's here. The Holy Spirit is, is leading us and guiding us. And when I come to church, if the Holy Spirit don't act up, I miss it. I, I just felt like, oh, I, it wasn't no sense in coming. We need the Holy Spirit to get in our lives and, and mess us up. <laughs> we, we need to be messed up. And if the Holy Spirit will mess a few people up, we'll start getting... I'll, I'll never forget what Leonard Ravenhill said one time. Leonard Ravenhill said, so one of these days, somebody is going to come into our churches and they're going to pick up a Bible and they're going to read it and they're going to act on it and it's going to scare every one of us to death. <laughs> I want to participate. I want people to participate in serving the Lord. How did church lose its appeal? How, how did it lose its appeal? What, what happened to us that, that it lost its appeal? And, and, and when did church get to be boredom? When, when, when did it come to a time in our life that we didn't, uh, we didn't want to go to church? You know, I, I, I guess it's when we stopped participating in the services. Okay, when we stopped participating. You know, what, if, if, if I don't have any money in the bank, I, there ain't no sense to be going to the bank and trying to get some. If people are not participating and you don't have any spirit in you, there ain't no sense in going. A lot of people come to church and their spirit. There's so much I want to say. The saddest thing I know in America is that we come to church and we sat through a church service and we did not know that the Holy Spirit was there. We didn't know he was there. And, and you know what? You, you come out, I come in and I, I watch my young people come through the door. <laughs> and when they come through the door, I look at them and I say, what time did you go to bed this morning? And they'll say, 2.30, 3 o'clock. And I look at their parents and I said, I know you didn't know that, but they did. Sure they did. But here we go. Nowadays, we have to do something extra to amuse people. And I, I don't see that. You know, people, people used to come to church to see the saints in action. But we've lost our weapon that produces... This and, and God don't want us just to stand up. He wants us to stand out. Amen. He wants us to stand out. And Christians, don't be ashamed. You know, we, we, I, I'll never forget one time. I was in a restaurant one time. And this was before I started preaching. And, 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 and I, I was just a Christian, a uh, uh, young Christian. And, and we, we had our family there. And I gathered to pray. And I, I said, dear Lord, thank you for our food. Thank you for the blessings of life. Thank you for the service today. And, Bless the food to nourish us and let our families be used in, in your service. Amen. It wasn't two minutes till some guy come over and he sat down on a table right above me and he said, Dear Lord, I thank you for the food. <laughs> Everybody in that place looked up and I thought he beat me. <laughs> I should have been the one that done that. God wants you and I to stand out. If we don't show the world Jesus Christ, and we have to do that through the Holy Spirit, God not only, hey, brother, listen, we, we, we're sailing out, and I, I hate that. Amen. I hate that. Now, the Bible says this. I'm getting to my message here, okay? The Bible says this. It says, when the word was sown, that the devil come immediately to take it away. Satan has taken many Christians hostage. And even after they are freed, they still have not lost that hostage mentality. I have people that come to the altar. Brother Tony, I don't know if you preachers have this or not. I have people that come to the altar week after week after week praying about the same sin. And they'll tell you, oh, I, I, I'm so sorry that I did these things and, and I pray God will forgive me. And God forgives you if you ask him and you mean it in your heart, God forgives you. But next week they come right back, same old sin, same old prayer, same old thing. Folks, if you can't get that, that you're still hostage. 
You're still living in that hostage mentality. And if you can't get over that first sin or that sin that you did, if you can't get through that and get by that, God's never going to be able to use you. God can't use you if you don't get over this stuff and we need to get over it, you know. I came to Christ because I couldn't handle life without Him. I just couldn't handle it, my friend. And, and I, I think, you know, temptation was too strong. The flesh was too weak. If you can't get over these sins, now, now let me give me my thoughts. Satan don't care about any of you. He don't care about any of you. He wouldn't even mess with you if you didn't have the Word of God in you. That's what the devil hates. The devil hates the Word of God that's in you because the Word of God is the power of salvation to everyone that believeth. And when the Word of God gets in your heart, it has the ability to transform you into another person. Brother, listen, he can make you like Jesus Christ. And brother, the devil had enough trouble with one Jesus. He don't want a million of them walking around. So what he's going to do is do his very best to get the word of God out of you. He's going to work on you and he's going to try you and he's going to give you. And, 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 and folks, listen, we fall into his trap if we're not careful. He says this, if I can just get the word of God out of them and I can get the word of God out of their lives, I'll give them back to human. And when I give them back to human, I can handle them. That's right. The devil can't handle you if you've got the word of God in you. You are more powerful than the devil only when the word of God is in you. You've got to have the Word of God in you to do that. And you see, it's the Word of God that makes you different. It ain't your clothes. It ain't how you dress. It ain't how you wear your, your outfits. It ain't uh, uh, your finance. It ain't your social status. It's the Word of God in you that makes you different. And that's where you and I are missing out in life. If we got the Word of God in us, we're bold enough to face the devil head on and win. We can win this thing. We can still win America back if we'll stand up and be what God wants us to be and let the devil know that we're not afraid of him because the word of God is in our lives. <laughs> oh, I get happy sometimes. I want the word of God in my heart. It is the word of God that gives me power and makes me more powerful than Satan. And listen, when the word gives you power over him, that means we have authority over him. And you and I can have that. You can't resist the devil if you don't have nothing in you to resist the devil with. I, you know why we, we were so deep in sin? It's because we couldn't get away from the devil. But when Jesus come in, <laughs> brother, he put a barrier up there. The word of God kept him away from us. Now, Remember the scripture, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Now let me tell you how I say that. Greater is he that is in me than him that's after me. <laughs> I don't care who's after you. If you've got the word of God in your life, you're greater than he is. Amen. And you don't have to worry about it. Now, the second thing, the Word of God, when it comes into your heart, uh, the Word of God will give you power over the devil and it'll help you to have power over him and it's the power of God and the salvation. But when the Word of God is in a person's heart, it will always produce joy. Rejoice forevermore. Don't be afraid to smile. Don't be afraid to praise the Lord. Don't be afraid to be happy. Whether the world is cursing and lying and stealing, don't be afraid to get in the midst of them and say, I'm happy today. I had a woman one time. Man, she give me down. I got her son saved. And man, I was just rejoicing. And she cornered me in a grocery store. And brother, she gave me down the road. Ain't the right words for it, but she gave me down the road. And when she got through, she said, now what do you think of that? I said, I love you. <laughs> Eat her up. But you see, you know why that I could love her? 
It's because I had the Holy Spirit in my life. Boy, I wish I had a, I wish I had an empty glass up here. I, I held an empty glass up in front of the church the other day, and I said, you know what's in this? It's full of air. Now, I said, I can get that air out of there. And uh, they look at me, and I just took me some water and poured it in that cup until I filled it up. The air was gone. You want evil out of your heart, get filled up with the Holy Spirit. You want hatred out of your heart, fill up with the Holy Spirit. You want sin out of your life, fill up with the Holy Spirit. You want lust and jealousy out of your heart, fill up with the Holy Spirit. It ain't got no room. It ain't got no place to be. But it produces joy. Get the Word of God in you and you'll be happy. Brother, I was never so happy when the Word of God comes into my life. And Satan don't like joy. The devil don't like joy. He likes heartbreak. I, I went over to Galatians and got these. The devil don't like soberness. Uh, he likes drunkenness. He don't like love. He likes hate. He don't like goodness. He likes wrath. He don't like peace. He likes strife. He don't like gentleness. He likes murder. He don't like faith. He likes witchcraft. He don't like meekness. He likes jealousy. He don't like wholesomeness. He likes adultery. Who in the world wants to serve somebody like that? The things he likes is contrary to what you and I like. Gee, now look what Jesus said. Jesus said in John, he said, I have spoken this to you that my word might remain in you and your joy be full. <laughs> Brother, I don't know about you. Brother Tony's congregation, but half of my people at home ain't full of joy. <laughs> There's some emptiness in there. And Jesus said, if we keep the word of God in us, our joy will be full. Satan wants to strip you out of that joy because if he can get the joy out of you, if he can't get the joy out of you, he'll never defeat you. But if he can get your joy out of your life, he'll defeat you, my friend. And it won't be long until you'll be just as hateful as you ever was. And once he gets the joy out of you, now here's the thing about this. You know, you and I are built for joy. We want to have joy in our lives. Every one of us, we want to be happy. We want to have joy in our lives. And when the devil gets the joy out of your life, you still crave it. And then here he shows up and he gives you this false joy. He'll give you an alcohol bottle and say, here, take this, man. This, this will make you happy. Shoot it in your arms. That'll make you happy. He's got fake joy, you see. You know, we, 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 we're in an age of fake news, you know. CNN and ABC and CBS and all them think they come up with fake news. I got news for you. The devil come up with fake news 2,000 years ago. He's been faking people for 2,000 years. And the first thing I see in people that backslide is the joy going out of their life. When that joy goes out of their life, that's the first thing that I... I am I not right? Am I not right? That's the joy. I went up to many a person and I said, listen, are uh, you having some problems? Would you, are you, are you doing okay? And they said, Brother Stiles, well, how did you know? Because their joy was gone. You lose your joy, my friend. The devil is getting ready to give you a run for your money. Then the third thing is the word of God in you will always produce harmony and unity in the people of God. You think about that for a minute. I have never seen the church of God so splintered and so fragmented as it is today. Now, I'm not the real church, but you know what I'm talking about. Amen. The real church is not splintered or fragmented. The real church is solid. That's the body of Jesus Christ. But our, our, our congregations are everywhere. And... and I look at them and there's too many, too many church cliques. Now we don't need church cliques. We need a click in church. And if we can get the church clicking, my friend, the devil is going to be, uh, uh, he's going to be defeated. I'll tell you that right now. But we've got to learn that our job today is to keep the joy and the word of God in our lives. We got to. And we need to do that now. Now here's the thing I want you to remember. We need churches that are working together. It's time that we quit letting the devil come into our congregations and take our people out. Yeah. 
It's time we went to his army and, and, and took his people out. We need to get them out of the prisons and out of the bars, everywhere they're at. We need to let the devil know, hey, I, my daddy's bigger than your daddy. My daddy can whoop your daddy. We need to let the devil know, and we need to go into his vineyards and steal his people with the word of God. You know? And when people get the word of God in them, it'll solve all these church problems. All of these problems will be solved, you know? And, and then when you get that in, it'll make you want to come back to church. <laughs> I love that. You know, people, well, I'm glad to get out of there. I hate to hear that. But brother, if you get the word of God in you, and you get harmony and unity with your Christian brothers and sisters, you can't wait till church starts again. You will want to get back to church just as fast as you can and you're ready to go. It doesn't matter. People are hungry for the Word of God and many preachers today are giving them some diseased medicine. Diseased food. And then when they want some medicine, they are giving them false medicine that's not taking care of it. And here we are. You remember Job? I'll tell you what I thought when I was reading Job one time. And I thought, I've always thought that was the best sermon that I ever come up with in my life. Job listened to his four buddies. And after they talked to him for a while, Job looked at him and said, You all ain't nothing but physicians of no value. In other words, you're quacks. He said, you're doctors that ain't worth a nickel. And I want to tell you something, folks, that'll preach. <laughs> that will preach, as my brother Russ Hayes says. You see, people are hungry for the Word of God. We have, we, have, we have too many sermonettes delivered by Christianettes to people who come to church to hear the duets and the quartets and can't wait till they go outside and light up their cigarettes and then get some chlorettes to come in to kill their breath so you won't know they smoked their cigarettes. That's about where we're at today in, in our churches today. Satan doesn't want harmony and unity in the church. Jesus prayed that we all might be one. Now listen to this. This is a good verse of scripture. Jesus prayed that we all might be one. All of us might be one. Why? <laughs> so the world would believe that God had sent him. You think the world's going to believe God sent Jesus in if we're fussing and fighting and going on all this stuff? But brother, when our harmony and unity is there and Jesus prayed that we might be one, we, we need a fresh baptism Amen. of the Spirit of God. Yeah, you know, the, the Spirit of God is, is uh, uh, typified by oil. Okay? Now listen, folks, you can take an old squeaky machine and oil it up real good and it'll run quiet. Okay, you, you, it'll run longer and it'll last better, you know? And I, I think there's some saints that I, I've heard them going on now. I want to take some three in one oil and, and give them a little dose of, you know, the Father, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. You know, we want to, want to oil them up a little bit. They need to be oiled up. We need a good refreshing in America today of the Holy Spirit. Now, Jesus is coming after a glorious church. He, he ain't coming after a fighting church. He ain't coming after a lame church. But he's coming after the word of the church with the word of God in them. And when the word is cast out, and when you cast out, the, when the word of God is out of you, and the spirit of God out of you, might as well be out there laying out in the streets. And when the, when the word and the spirit, when God's witnesses in your life is out in the streets, affliction and persecution arises in your life. Because... Immediately, you'll get offended. People blame the preacher. They blame the boards. They blame the fellow saints for our, I guess you could say, offendedness. But it's all the devil. The devil is the problem. I, 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 now, I, I preach like this at, at Hope. For I never preach nothing anywhere else that I don't first preach at Hope, okay? I mean, I'm just going to tell you that. I, I, I preach to my people first. And, 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 and I have visitors that come in. I get some letters sometimes. <laughs> I don't know if Brother Tony does, but I get some letters sometimes. And every now and then I'll get a letter that don't have a name on it. 
I open it up and I look at the back page to see if they signed it. If their name ain't on it, I don't even read the letter. I throw it in the garbage can because I feel like if somebody ain't got enough of sense to write their own name, they ain't got enough of sense to write a letter. So I don't even read it. So it doesn't affect me. Now, I remember one time that D.L. Moody was preaching in Chicago. And, and when he got up to the pulpit there, laid an envelope with his name on it. And he opened it up before he preached. And he opened it up and it had one word on it. It said, fool. <laughs> D.L. Moody said, I got the strangest letter. He said, they didn't write a thing. They just signed their name. I don't let things like that bother me. Criticism, now listen to me. Here's the way I look at it. Criticism is a price of success. <laughs> I look at it, I like to look at it like that. Man, I'll tell you what, I, I do. It's a compliment in disguise. Remember that. When somebody criticizes you, that's a compliment in disguise. Someone is saying, you got something that I ain't got. And, and, and then they'll say, hey, if I can't reach up to your level of success, I'm going to try to pull you down to my level of failure. Don't you listen to criticism. It's, uh, that, that ought to be the best thing that, that, that you can brag on, it. you know. Proverbs 26 and 4 says, if I argue with a fool, then he's arguing back at a fool. <laughs> the greatest commandment is to love. And that love is waxing cold today in church. I, it bothers me. Our young people are not getting to grow up in the America that I grew up in. And that bothers me. I hate that. I wanted my kids to grow up in the America that I grew up in. I want my grandchildren to do that, but it's a different America. Because we're not committed to Jesus Christ. We're not committed like we ought to. If we love Him like we ought to, we will serve Him like we ought to. I believe that with all my heart. We're trying to get people, I'll tell you what we're doing in church. I'm going to tell you right now. We're trying to get people to serve the Lord that don't love Him. And you ain't going to get good service out of someone that don't love you. Now I'm going to tell you folks, love, if it's properly motivated, it'll cause you to serve. Too many people that we preach to today, and I'm fixing to close down. Too many people that we preach to today have got a face like I, I'm going to. I, I like to steal things my mother said, and people think I said them, and but they've got a face like that was on an iodine bottle. You remember that face on an iodine bottle? The person who doesn't feel like praising the Lord is the person that ought to be working on praising the Lord. You ought to be trying. Be persistent in prayer. I'm going to tell you what will make your life a lot better. One hour of day in prayer. Oh, I don't have that much time. How much time you watch TV? How much time do you, don't, I, you know, if you don't have, I grew up in a home that didn't have TV. But here's the thing I'm trying to say. One hour with Jesus will change your life every day. I mean, you'll be excited about coming to church and you'll get things out of church that you never got out of it before. You'll hear things. And if it's real love, it will spread. Okay? You'll never be what Jesus wants you to be if you don't have a super prayer life. And I trust today, and, and, and I appreciate you putting up with me, but I, I trust today that you'll commit your life to Christ. I mean commit the whole thing. Don't just commit Sundays and Wednesdays. Commit every day of the week. Commit your whole life to Jesus Christ. Amen. I was pretty strict on my two children. When they was growing up, everybody else was going here and everybody was going there and my kids were staying home with me. And Heather so often would come to me and say, Dad, everybody's doing this. And I'd say, Heather, they are not. 
because you ain't doing it and you that makes everybody ain't doing it and I, ju I was just solid with it but anyway we, we go out and eat on Fridays a lot of times me and my son and my daughter and I asked them one day I said I want to ask you a question are you all hurt that I didn't let you participate with all the other kids both of them in unison said no dad we're glad you did what you did oh I'll tell you what I've been buying their dinner ever since <laughs> I loved it no and, and, and here's, the thing, here's the thing I want to say, and, and I know sometimes, I, I don't brag on my, my family, I don't try to do that, but I knew where my daughter and my son was all their life growing up. My daughter would go on a date and she'd be home by 10 o'clock. <laughs> I knew where they were at. They both have tremendous jobs right now. I, they, now, my son's not going to church, but he, he never did drugs. Never drank. He loved his old stupid rock music, but anyway. Got a tremendous job. I mean, makes, I, I, don't, I don't believe they ought to pay people that much money. I don't think they ought to. I think they ought to give it back, some of that back to the parents for raising them. That's what I think. My daughter's got a tremendous job. And I'm so glad for that. My brothers told me one time, they said, Glenn, you're the luckiest one in the family. And I said, no, you know, really, I, I had enough of the gumption to say no to my children. And I want you today to learn how to say no to the devil. And church, we need to commit. Our song leader, would you come tonight? I can ramble with the best. We're going to sing a verse of a, two of a song. and I'm going to ask you tonight, are you committed? Are you committed? Are you a full-time commitment to Jesus Christ? Now, I, I'm not trying to just get an altar. If you want to come to these altars, that's fine. I, I don't know what's in your heart today, but I know one thing. We need a church that's capable of meeting all the needs of the world. And we can do that with the Word of God in us. And I hope tonight that somewhere, some way in your life that you'll have a closer walk with our Lord. And you can do that if you'll pray. While we stand tonight, our brother, would you come? Come on, Brother Watson. However you want to pray, come on. Whatever you want to do. Brother Watson, give it to you. Page 147. 147. I yield to the Savior, forsaking my own. From sinful things now I will come. To Thee I surrender, for mercy I call. Come take the first place in my heart. Oh, take the first place in my heart. Oh, take the first place in my heart. I open the door, come in, I implore, Lord, take the first place in my heart. Oh, come, gentle spirit, don't leave me, I from thee I will never depart. I come to thee now, for I cannot delay. Lord, take the first 
on the field I've seen people that would camp out for three days in a tent waiting for a shoe store to open to buy a man who has never professed Christ to get his tennis shoes and I've said those fools I've seen stadiums and coliseums packed with people, sometimes riots taking place. I looked at it and said, those fools. And then I thought again, I said, no, they're excited about something. They're there because they're excited about something. And then when I showed up at church on Sunday morning, I said, where's the fools who are lined up and can't wait to get in here because they know something exciting is going to take place. And I said, Lord, forgive me. Because the onus is more on me and the church that we're creating and allow, allowing, let me say that, allowing the Holy Spirit to create an environment where fools, if you will, are lined up and waiting to get in because they know something exciting is going to take place just told my wife that when we get back the enthusiasm and the excitement about our Savior not a false fire but a holy fire that people will look at us and say uh, they've got something that I need to have until we reckon with ourselves and realize that we need to be fools for Jesus Christ and not worry about what people may say but to truly worship God and thank him and praise I'm not saying be crazy and stupid and charismatic I hear people say you know give God a crazy praise no I'm not talking about giving him a crazy praise I'm saying giving him an intellectual praise I know why I'm jumping I know why I'm shouting. 
I know why I'm blessing his name because I know where he brought me from. It don't have to be a crazy praise. It can be a praise. I know what God has done for me. And when we begin to regenerate that in our worship experiences, we may be surprised. Thank God for the word tonight. God's word produces power. God's word produces joy. And it would have been so easy for Pastor Sizemore to say, that it produces love. I'm glad he didn't. But it does produce harmony. And harmony is the byproduct of love. So then, when we check ourselves, we have to ask, do I have the love that I'm supposed to have? Is it really a love issue that I don't have the harmony and unity with the people of God? Well, I'm glad to see everybody here tonight because what you're showing me and telling me is I love God so much that I want to be in camp meeting. I want to be where the people of God are gathering together. And I'm not calling for, a, 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 you know, people running the aisles and hooping and hollering, jumping and shouting. You know, that, that's all right if you do that. But there's something greater. And that is that, that heartfelt love that we share from heart to heart and breast to breast that encourages and, and lifts us so that we can live and be all that God would have us to be. Remember the message tonight. I, I honestly thought, one, I need to definitely get the CD and DVD. Two, I would love to share this with my congregation. And three, every preacher that's here tonight, you ought to get that for yourself to challenge and encourage you to stay committed to God. It'll be worth it after a while. It will be worth it after a while. And even though we don't see the results that we pray for at this moment does not mean, don't let the moment define the totality of your service for the Lord. Even though we may not see it today, if you remain committed, God will bring it to pass by and by. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, we thank you for every heart that stepped out with the courage to come to an altar of prayer. First, led to their knees was the preacher of the word. And for all of those who follow, and Father, we pray that you will help us tonight to remember that when we are committed to your word, something happens. Power comes in. Power to have victory over the forces of this world. Joy fills our hearts and overflows. And harmony and unity is manifested because of the power of the word of God actively working in our lives. Father, we thank you for the challenge of the word tonight. And we pray that you would help us even as we prepare to leave here to take this word with us. We ask it in Jesus' great name. Amen.